Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fancy fold card to share with you and also this box. Now the box is a separate video and I'll put a link to it at the top of the screen. This is the card I've created. It measures six inches by five inches. I've used the Christmas Gleaming stamp set and the Coordinating Brightly Gleaming Specialty Designer Series paper. On the back is a space where you can write your message. Now this is a very dimensional card but only because I've raised up the layers inside. You don't have to do that and I'll show you another sample at the end of this video that is less dimensional. And this is what the card looks like when it's opened. It's quite unusual and beautiful. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for the various elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, you can take a screenshot and refer to it later. These are the three main pieces that you need to create this card. I'm using pretty peacock cardstock as my card base. And then I've got two pieces of the brightly gleaming designer series paper. The main one and then the smaller piece that I'm going to use for my panels. I'm going to start with my card base and I'm going to score this in the center it measures 10 inches across, so this is scored at 5 inches. Now the panel piece will be scored at 2 inches, 4 inches and 6 inches. The larger piece of paper will be scored at 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches. 8 inches and 10 inches. I want to remove a rectangular section from the centre of this piece so I'm inserting it into my trimmer with the short side across the top and I want to line that right hand edge up at one and a half inches and that's right at the end of the ruler. Then I'm going to position my cutting blade at two inches which is on the first score line and I'm going to cut down to 10 inches which is where the last score line is. Then I'm going to turn my paper around and repeat that for the other side. So I'm lining up that right hand edge at one and a half inches setting my cutting blade at two inches and then I'm going to cut down to 10 inches. I'm now going to cut between those two cut lines and remove this rectangular section. So I'm going to insert the paper into my trimmer with the long side across the top and this time I'm lining up the left hand edge at two inches and I'm going to cut from one and a half inches to four and a half inches. Then I'm going to turn my paper around to the other side and repeat what I've just done. So I'm lining up that left hand edge at two inches and then I'm going to cut down from one and a half inches to four and a half inches. The next thing I'm going to do is make little half inch cuts above and below the edges to that window that I've just cut out. Now there are two inch sections all the way along this. Um, there's a two inch section on each side and there are four additional sections above the window and below the window. I just want to make a cut in the centre of each of those two inch sections. 
I've lined my left hand edge up at three inches and then I'm going to cut down from one inches to one and a half inches which is the start the top of that window and then I'm going to cut from four and a half inches which is the bottom of the window to five inches so just making half inch cuts then I'm moving my left hand edge along to five inches and I'm going to repeat so I'm cutting from one inch to one and a half and four and a half inches to five. Then I've moved my paper again to seven inches and I'm repeating. And finally, my left hand edge is positioned at nine inches. I position my blade at one inch on the vertical ruler and cut down and then cut from the four and a half inches to five inches. I'm now going to fold this concertina style but I'm going to do it just a little bit differently. I'm starting with my centre fold. I want to make sure that this is all nice and square. So I'm making sure the edges are aligned and then using my bone folder to reinforce that centre score. Then I'm going to gently crease the other score line. So I'm starting with a valley and then a mountain. Then I've got my valley centre fold. Then it's another mal valley, mountain, and finally a valley. Now I'm going to make sure all my edges are lined up as much as possible and then I'm going to use my bone folder to reinforce those folds. I just want to keep everything nice and square I don't want it slanting off which is what can happen when you concertina fold. I'm now going to add this to my card base. So I'm folding my card base in half along that score line and burnishing the fold. And then my glue will go on each of the side sections of that designer series paper panel. And then this goes right against the edge of the card base. So it should match the top and bottom edge and the side edge and then repeat again for the other side. The remaining piece of designer series paper just needs to be folded concertina fashion. So starting with a valley fold, then a mountain, and then another valley. And I'm not going to insert this into the card base just yet. I'm going to decorate it first. Three of the small inside panels and the large panel on the front of the card were created in the same way. Firstly, I ran them through my die cutting machine using the tufted dynamic folder. Next, I'm going to use Delicata Celestial Copper Ink and just press the pad onto the corner of an acrylic block. I'll pick the ink up using an aqua painter and then just paint over all the dots on the panel. And once I've finished, I can add the panel to the copper foil mat. This is the Christmas Gleaming stamp set and I'm going to use part of the little border stamp at the top and the bottom of my sentiment panel. I'll just need to mask off part of it so the design is centred on the top and bottom of the panel. I've already positioned my stamp and I'm using the Celestial Copper ink again to stamp the image. And I'm just using a post-it note to mask off the part of the image that I don't want on my cardstock panel. 
then I can flip my panel around and stamp the other side. I have a large piece of normal weight, very vanilla card here that I'm going to use to stamp the rest of my images on. And I'm going to stamp my first ones with the blue ink. Now, I stamped using Knight of Navy, but what I should have done was stamp it using Pretty Peacock. I didn't realize until I was editing my photos for this project that I'd actually used the wrong color ink. So wherever you see me use Knight of Navy, just pretend it's Pretty Peacock, because that's what I should have used. Now I'm double stamping, which is why I use my Stamparatus. I wanted to make sure I had a lovely dark color and it did turn out lovely. It's just the wrong color. Now I'm going to turn the cardstock around and line up my other stamps. And these I'm going to stamp and emboss in copper. So I'm prepping the cardstock using my embossing buddy, first of all, to remove any static. Then I'm stamping them using the Celestial Copper ink again. And I'm going to stamp them twice to get a nice impression. And then I'm going to cover with the copper embossing powder. Now I do actually need another of the larger ornaments. So I'm going to reposition that stamp and stamp this one again and cover with the copper powder. I also need a small ornament stamped onto some copper foil. So I'm going to do that here. Again, covering with the copper powder. And then lastly, I'm going to stamp one corner of the mat that I'm going to position onto the back of the card. And again, this will be embossed, so I'll cover with the copper powder. And then I can heat all of these with my heat tool to melt the powder. I'm using the smallest of the rectangle stitch framelits to cut out the sentiment. And I forgot to mention earlier that I'm also using one of these for the panel on the front of the card to cut out the vanilla mat. And this is the fourth size down from the largest. I'm going to use the Gleaming Ornaments punches to punch out all the remaining ornament images. Now the little sentiment that says Merry Christmas, I will hand cut that out. I've added dimensionals to the reverse of my sentiment panel, two of the larger ornaments and two of the smaller ornaments, and the remaining three ornaments will be glued flat to the panels. So I'm starting with my sentiment panel, and this is just going to go into the centre of the panel that I stamped earlier. Two of the remaining panels will each have a large ornament placed in the centre of them. The remaining smaller panel will have two of the smaller ornaments positioned on it. Now the blue one's going to be glued flat to the card and the copper one will be raised up on dimensionals. For the main panel on the front of the card, I'm going to glue the two larger ornaments flat 
and then the little copper ornament will be raised up on the dimensionals. I'm going to add some of our copper star designer elements to some of these panels. I'm putting one into the centre of the blue smaller ornament and another onto the copper ornament. Then I'm going to add more to the top and the bottom of the sentiment panel. The little sentiment strip can also now be added to the front panel and I've already gone ahead and added dimensionals onto the reverse of this panel. I can now position my panels onto my smaller piece of designer series paper. Now when you do this you want to get them as central as possible. Um, the half inch cuts will take up a half inch at the bottom and the top of this panel. So you don't want to go into that sort of area. So I'm just masking them off using my magnetic rulers and then I can centre my panels on the remaining space. All of these panels are going to be glued flat to the paper strip. I've created four small bows using some of our copper trim and I'm going to add these to each of the ornaments using a mini glue dot. Now before I add the inside panels, I want to finish the panels on the front and the back of my card. It's easier to position these while I can still um, fold the card flat. So I'm going to add my back panel. and then I can glue the front panel into place. Finally, the inside panels can be added to the card. This can be a little fiddly, but um, it's not too bad. I find it easier to start with a centre one and you just want to slot the bottom edge in first and make sure they're pushed all the way down and then you can do the top. Just be careful that you don't tear the paper. And that's it. So we can close them up and give them a little press. And then just check that the little slits are positioned halfway across each of the panels. So here is the finished card. It's really beautiful. This paper is just gorgeous. Now this is far too dimensional to go into an envelope really. 
so I've made a matching box for it and I'll put a link to the video at the top of the screen and then here's another look at my original card Again, it used the same paper, although this one was in Night of Navy, and it was meant to be. Now, I have made another one, and this one uses the Animal Outing stamp set, but I've paired it with the... Um, the Animal Expedition Designer Series paper, which is now retired, I'm sorry to say, but I've got so much left I had to use, use some of it up. The images on the front of my card were all stamped, as was the one on the back. Now this one I kept flat, I glued everything flat to the panels, so there's very little dimension when you close the card. So it's up to you what you do, you can either add your layers raised, or you can keep them flat. All the little images that I've used on the inside panels were actually cut from one of the sheets of paper. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.